Welcome, this is Shakti, online astrologer, and as you see, I'm living in paradise, Malawi. So I'm very far away, which means I'm doing most of my work online, my forecast readings, my astrology, counseling. So uh, if you haven't done so, please sign up for your subscription. So you make sure you are kept in the loop for whatever upcoming uh, astrological uh, forecasts I'm preparing. Uh, I also love, love, love to hear back from you because it's kind of hard to keep this going if it's not some kind of a dialogue. And uh, I promise I will get back to you with whatever uh, comment you leave me. Today I want to have a look with you together at the coming up full moon lunar eclipse, which will be in Aries. So we will have an astrological perspective onto what's going on there. First of all, the, it's a total lunar eclipse. So there are some people who will see that better than others. People in the eastern and central areas of mainland uh, United States and Canada will have probably the best views of the total lunar eclipse and that will be on the night of September 27th, of course depending on the weather. So here the eclipse will begin after moonrise and will be finished around midnight September 28th. You might ask yourself why should you be interested in moon astrology? And uh, I do believe that there is this natural interest of many people uh, with the full moon and the new moon and the waning and waxing and especially the solar eclipses and the lunar eclipses because we can see it and there are uh, uh, effects we, we can personally verify. So everybody knows the full moon uh, might not support uh, deep sleep, the so cats are outside and often very loud, people are drinking more, are more emotional. So we kind of have a sense of there is an impact between the waxing and waning phases of the moon. And especially the solar or lunar eclipses, because there are especially strong new moon and full moons. A little bit about me. My name is Shakti Karola Nevrin. I'm originally from Germany, have been living on Maui for 20 years now. So I'm doing most of my work online, sitting at the computer, doing my forecasts and do astrological counseling, which I am very passionate about because after 37 years, there is no doubt in my mind that it truly deeply helps us to live our highest best potential in this lifetime and the deciding factor is of is of course our state of consciousness so astrology is a wonderful way to widen that state of consciousness into a wisdom perspective my son is in taurus and uh, my ascendant is gemini Mercury is in the 12th house in Taurus, so uh, I'm just sharing this with you to prepare you that my way of preparing these uh, uh, videos and my teachings are very practically oriented. So it's really always about what can you do with those certain frequencies, those certain uh, moments in time. So uh, with my Mercury in the 12th house, I do have access to those more mysterious invisible dimensions. And uh, with the Taurus aspect, I, uh, I'm very practical. So I always kind of will suggest very practical things for you to do and take home with you after you have listened to one of my forecasts. The art of astrology. In astrology, we work with archetypes and symbols, and uh, you could imagine them as the underlying creative forces of the universe. And of course, they're always higher or lower manifestation to express those creative universal forces. Like when we look at the birth chart, everybody lives their birth chart, there's no doubt about that, but when we just look at the birth chart, we cannot tell is it the birth chart of a cockroach or is it the birth chart of an enlightened master. We just don't know. So 
I believe that our consciousness, our maturity, our soul maturity is holding the key to how we are able to uh, bring those creative universal forces symbolized by planets into life's manifestation. And that's why knowing about your chart and what the highest potentials are and what is available to you will give you better choices and a more fulfilled and meaningful life. How come that some people are very strongly impacted by lunar eclipses and others are not? Others just shrug their shoulders and say, so what? So I believe it has to do with how the uh, eclipses are situated in your birth chart and how things get stimulated in your birth chart, which makes them more impactful for one person than the other. And of course, the key is uh, to know your chart and your your planets and where they are, and then you can really take advantage of those uh, special energies. I will give you your free birth chart and horoscope if you don't have that yet. If you go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, then uh, you will get your uh, mini love stone report and your birth chart. So uh, that might be a good starting point for you. We had four eclipses this year, two solar eclipses, two lunar eclipses. Uh, so the last solar eclipse was just this month, September 13th. And I've made an extra video for that. So if you uh, are interested to look at that as well, I put a link on for you. And uh, two lunar eclipses, so the last one happening right now and the one we're talking about. As we know now, a lunar eclipse is always a full moon. And a lunar eclipse is happening when the Earth is briefly between the Sun and the Moon. So when the Earth casts its shadow on a full moon and eclipses it, the Moon might get a red glow. And this is often referred to blood moons. So this one will be for around an hour that this blood moon will be visible and, and total. So there are regions in the world who will at least see some parts of the eclipse, like Europe, Southeast East Asia, Africa, much of North America, Canada, South America, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian Ocean, Arctic and Antarctic. So many people will try to catch this one. But what does it really mean for us as an individual? So I believe the lunar eclipse can be understood by comparing it to restarting your computer. So you restart your computer and uh, problems might have uh, solved themselves. So here we compare the lunar eclipse with restarting your emotional consciousness with a new level of awareness. It's like there's this moment in time where the frequencies you're surrounded with are restarting, reaching into your emotional body and consciousness in a new way and giving you a new perspective because of that. So a lunar eclipse is always a full moon, but it's not always a total lunar eclipse. So uh, that's, of course, the most impactful and impressive one to watch. So interesting always is to see in which signs uh, eclipses are happening because whenever you have your sun, your ascendant or other planets in that sign, which is here Aries, then you can really count on having some strong energies coming into your life. And as I said before, consciousness is the key. So if you know what is happening, what energies are coming into your life, wanting to be integrated, then you have a much higher chance to take advantage, to really ride the wave as, as we know how to do here in Hawaii. So um, this one is happening at 7.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so you can correlate that back to where you are on the planet. And uh, now I want to have a more in-depth look about Aries and what that means for this lunar eclipse. 
Let's talk about Aries, Aries personality then, the sign of action. So Aries is not only the first of the fire signs, but with Aries we also start the whole zodiac, the, the circle of evolution. It correlates with the spring equinox, the beginning of the astrological year. So Aries has all this starting, beginning, fiery, passionate energy because of that. And because of that, Arius is the archetype of the warrior, the pioneer, the one who starts passionately into new beginnings. So it's a very male energy, very uh, fiery uh, way to, to take charge of life. So again, Arius is ruled by Mars. Uh, who is looked at the, the ultimate archetype of the warrior, the soldier. Uh, in your chart, the Mars is also symbolizing your life force energy and how that uh, keeps expressing itself. So it has more dimension than just the warrior aspect, but that's kind of what we look at first. One of the things a warrior values most is courage. Courage in the face of fears. So in your chart, your Mars therefore also symbolizes where you need to take that deeper look and face your fears and step it up anyway. So that brings me to the aspect of willpower. Uh, Arius learns to uh, deepen, to learn about willpower, to uh, find uh, strengths in themselves to do what's necessary. And of course, Aries personalities are very ambitious. So in a way, from an evolutionary angle, you could say when you come in as an Aries, you learn about being discriminating and strong and expressive and passionate and all that. But it also means that you need a victory. You need to to face your fears and uh, have things going your way. So the high-end aspect of areas is to learn about the right use of force. The ability to put down your food, to say this is it, to defend yourself, to not be a pushover. And the other aspect is learning to take care of the weaker. So here we have the archetype of the hero, the one who fights against uh, unsurmountable uh, obstacles and resistances and, and circumstances. And uh, he usually not only does it for his own uh, good, but uh, for his community, for his loved ones. So there's always a bigger picture to becoming a hero. So it's not just an ego-driven, I'm the best and the, the, the biggest one here. And of course, when we have so much passion and energy and fire in the mix, there is a huge shadow. So Aries shadow, the low end pass, has to do with abuse of energy, of passion, which would be cruelty, rage, anger, abuse, egocentricity. So this is when Aries takes to the low end of things. In evolutionary astrology, we always look at the whole chart from a karmic perspective. So if somebody has planets in Aries, uh, there is an evolutionary need and necessity for the soul to learn about courage, to um, express acts of moral value, uh, to experience one's limits, to set limits to others, and the ability to claim one's right. So here is where the ambition and the fierceness of the area soul can be wonderful and, and uh, uh, bring good, good results. As usual, I want to narrow this all down to be very practical. So what are we all going to do with this full moon lunar eclipse? And where is this uh, mystical renewal and, and new start happening? So first of all, I want to invite you 
to meditate on being a warrior of the heart. Meditate about courage. And even if you don't know your chart, you don't know where your Mars is, you will, if you sink down, look inside, you will know where in your life you need to show more courage, courage where you need to face those fears and do what's needed anyway. So um, that's a good practical suggestion for anybody here. The next one is learn to be still and control your lower impulses. Again, something we can do quite nicely when we meditate, when we become still, when the mind settles down and uh, we can become aware of what's in us. And uh, when I say lower impulses, I mean more those instinctual reactivities we all carry. So um, another area is uh, then to learn to control those lower impulses. What means somebody pushes your button, you are very angry, but you hold it in. You don't need to dump on the other. You don't have to be reacting to somebody pushing your buttons. But if you allow yourself to feel those feelings, then you have that, that moment of choice. Then you can decide if you want to unload or if you hold it in and, and look into what, what was that button which triggered you. And then, of course, a big uh, subject uh, around this lunar eclipse is an opportunity to connect, reconnect, and deepen your passion. So we all have areas where we feel very passionate about. And then there are practicalities in life. We need to make money and, and do things we might not like to do. But here it's really an opportunity to connect with your passion, with what makes you happy, with where you feel utterly alive and expressive and uh, make more place for that in your life. One of the true birthstones for Aries is the garnet. The whole idea with uh, gemstones and their metaphysical qualities and frequencies is that they have this homeopathic kind of ability by you bringing them into your auric field that they help balance you very specifically. So we have actually like 14 birthstones relating to all the different planets, but the most general one we attribute to Aries is actually the garnet. So I have actually done a whole video about the garnet, so I, I will put a link on for you. Garnet can come in many colors, the whole rainbow, and uh, with different names for each color. So it's relatively hard, so uh, it makes a nice stone for rings and, and other jewelry. And the most uh, interesting quality is that the garnet group in general is very down to earth, very practical minded. And especially the red garnet, most of you know, can help you to take action, to, to assist you in all your worldly endeavors and help you manifest your dreams and visions. So what a wonderful stone to have at your side at this particular time. If you have not done this yet, now is a good time to sign up for a free subscription. So you can uh, stay informed about future forecasts coming up. You could also sign up for my newsletter that will uh, keep you in the loop. And uh, if you go to my website, maoastrologyreading.com, I also give you a free report for what I call your love storm which is based on the Venus position in your birth chart and you get your birth chart. So please like the video, that helps uh, with the rating and let me know if you have any comments. I'm always happy to, get, to hear from you and uh, we'll get back to you. If you're really interested in astrology, I like you to know that I do teach astrology classes for beginners once in a while. So uh, it could be something you're interested to learn for your own inner process or to start a new career. Uh, either way, 
uh, connect with me, send me an email, and I will let you know about the specifics and when the next training is going to start. Here's how you can reach me. You can either call me. Uh, remember, I'm in Hawaii because of the time zone. So my number is 808-878-8182. Or you can head over to my website, send me an email, maoriastrologyreading.com. And uh, so long I do this work, so more excited I am about it. So with 37 years of experience, I love to do this work and love to hear from you. And uh, if you want, we can do your astrological reading through Skype, or if you can't do that, we can do it on the phone. So I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thanks for visiting. I hope to see you soon again. Aloha.